Hello everyone and welcome back to the video. Today I'm going to be talking about Paladin and why it's generally advised to not go for this unit in 1v1 games and why it's considered a risky option and in some cases even a bad option. Now note that I'm talking specifically for 1v1 because in team games Paladin is the option that most pocket players want to go for and that's totally fine. That's a completely different discussion. In team game it's meta for specific reasons but that is not to say anything about the 1v1 and the 1v1 has a completely different set of circumstances to consider which we'll be talking about today which makes Paladin a very risky option. Note I'm talking about the Paladin and not the Cavalier. Although they're the same line of units, the Knight line, uh, they are not the same kind of risk reward system that we're going to be talking about. Paladin has a lot more risk associated to it, whereas Cavalier is generally considered a pretty good investment and a solid option to go for. Now, there's three main reasons that I'm going to be talking about as to why Paladin is not a good option. I'm going to quickly sum them up and then go into a little bit more detail. A, it's expensive, two, it's predictable, and three, it's not sustainable. Let's go with the first one, it being expensive. When I'm talking about expensive, I'm talking about the upgrade itself. It has two costs associated to it. It has the time it takes and the resources, which is a 1300 food and 750 gold, whereas the time is two minutes and 50 seconds for the Paladin technology. No, this is just the Paladin technology. That means to actually get there, you need to get the Cavalier technology, and you need to actually have a good amount of Cavalier on the field to actually make use of that upgrade and if you don't then you actually have to train the unit afterwards. Notice that this is a very steep cost to simply pay for an upgrade and a lot of times you actually get the upgrade or get there to Paladin and don't have the resources to actually produce from it or produce some of those units. But when I talk about expensive, I think the main thing for me with the Paladin technology is how long it takes, guys. Two minutes and 50 seconds, that gives your opponent enough time to get the Halberdier technology and to get a lot of Halberdier out. It also lets them set up their own composition. If they want to go for Arbalest or unique unit, they can use those resources to get into that composition a lot faster. And so you're forced to defend with your Cavalier and maybe take some suboptimal trades before even getting to your final composition, which is the Paladin. So at two minutes and 50 seconds, a lot of things can happen in high level play. and often Oftentimes you're going to be hard pressed to get this Paladin out quickly and by the time you do your opponent already has those Halberdiers out in the field. And the reason why they're able to get the Halbs early is because you already showed that you're going Cavalier. Take a look at the second point that I have, predictability. If I'm committing to Cavalier, my opponent will naturally want to go, let's say they're playing Arbalest or let's say they're playing some sort of infantry unit or whatever the case may be. If they see a Cavalier, they can already start thinking about Halberdiers or Camos or any counter that counters Cavalry. And the problem with Paladin is that they get countered by the same thing that the Cavalier gets countered by. So by going Cavalier, you're telling your opponent that you're committing to the Knight or Cavalier or Paladin route. And if you're a Paladin Civ, there's automatically that danger that you can get Paladin. Now, obviously, Paladin is a very dangerous upgrade. It's a very strong unit. So your opponent will recognize this threat if they're a high level or competent player, and they're gonna be already thinking about going for a counter. Most often, it's gonna be Halberdier, which trades very cost-effectively against any of those heavy cavalry units. So the expensiveness and the time it takes for the upgrade to actually kick in, Combined with the predictability, it makes it a very risky option to go for simply because your opponent will almost immediately have the counter once you have your upgrade ready. And so if you find yourself in a situation where you have Paladin into Halberdier, it's not yet doomed. There's still some plays you can do to try to snowball the game. And the best thing to do is to mass a lot of Paladin, take one fight, try to win it with 200 pop advantage because Paladin is actually much more pop efficient than Halberdier, meaning they win 1v1. So if it's 60 Paladin versus 60 Halberdier, the Paladin will easily win that fight, albeit it might not be cost effective and it's not as sustainable as you might expect it to be, or as you would expect it to be, not sustainable, I should say. But that's your best play from there. Try to get a big army and try to end the game fast before the gold becomes an issue and before cost-effective trades come into play too much. So Paladin still has an option or a play available if even if your opponent has that counter. However, if you're not able to end the game with just one big swoop, one big fight, then you get into that third problem with them. They're not sustainable. Remember what I said, that to get into the Paladin upgrade, you need to get the Cavalier upgrade, then the Paladin upgrade, and then all the Blacksmith upgrades associated to it to have a strong unit. And if you lose that first fight, or if you don't get as big a lead from that first fight as you wanted, your opponent will start to take better trades since all the Paladin counters are much cheaper than the Paladin itself. Even Heavy Camel, even though the Camel costs gold, first of all, costs less gold per unit than the Nightline, and the Heavy Camel upgrade costs significantly less gold and food than the Paladin upgrade, and they trade pretty evenly. So every single counter to the Paladin is actually cheaper than the Paladin. So if you can't win the game quickly, you're not gonna be able to sustain that kind of pressure with the Paladin, and your opponent will simply be able to overrun you. Even if you try to play Paladin plus Skirms, which is a very strong yet expensive composition, your opponent can easily just trade Halberdier versus Paladin, and even if your Skirms will eventually thin out the Halbs, he can just keep making them because they don't cost gold.
gold. So even though you're kind of trading decently with the skirms and the halbs, every time you take a fight, some paladin will die and those are gonna be harder and harder to replace as the game goes on. So what should you do if paladin is not the answer or better question, is paladin ever the option? Well, there's plenty of examples of paladin being used in 1v1 and actually being a game ending move either one way or the other. But in some cases you actually end up winning from this move. And generally speaking, when that happens, the reason it happens is that snowball effect like I talked about. You don't try to go paladin plus skirm and land that perfect one food unit, one gold unit composition. Instead, you try to overrun your opponent and try to win the game right then and there with the paladin despite your opponent having the counter. That's your best strategy with them. And the best way to do that is to go to 200 pop, then land that big fight and also get raids on the sides. Plus combine that with a few trebs and go for that all in gold unit push that can sometimes work. However, you actually need a very big lead for this to actually play out as you want it to. And if your opponent is at any point able to survive or stabilize, you're dead. So that's the only situation in which Paladin can work. In other situations, it's just simply not a good unit and not a good investment to go for. So that's the only way it can work, but the ways it can go wrong is plenty. So what should you do if Paladin is simply not the right option? The best thing to do in my opinion is to simply go for Cavalier upgrade because that's a very good spike in early castleage. And then after that, start thinking about other ways to secure the game. These ways include skirmishers and siege to kind of complement your Cavalier, use your Cavalier to pick off their army or to to raid their, your opponent's ego. And then if you want to commit to a horse unit or a cavalry unit in late game, try to go for light cavalry or hussar after that and conserve your gold for siege. So instead of going for that paladin power spike, you go for the cavalier power spike. And then once the cavalier starts falling off, you complement it with skirmishers and siege to add that power and a little bit more diversity to your army than you would have if you simply put all your eggs into the paladin basket. So I hope this makes sense that the Paladin is a very expensive, very all-in strategy when you're thinking about a 1v1 scenario. Keep in mind that the biggest difference between 1v1 and team games is the fact that in team games you have trade and in 1v1 you don't. So once the goal runs out on the map, that third problem I mentioned, which is the sustainability, becomes a major issue and is the biggest flaw in the Paladin strategy. Just to recap once more, that the Paladin strategy is completely all-in in most cases. If you go for it, I'd recommend spreading out and taking the extra gold on the map, going to 200 pop as fast as possible and going all-in to end the game. Take a fight, replenish your units because you can do that once or twice usually before the gold runs out and then look to end the game with some siege and some solid raids. It's possible to do this and it will catch your opponent off guard in a lot of cases, but in a lot of other cases, if your opponent plays smart and goes for the counter units and tries to stabilize, you will find yourself falling behind. So keep that in mind when thinking about Paladin and even when playing against it, that it's easy to counter if played correctly and you should know what those counter options are ahead of time and not wait till you see the Paladin on the field before you start reacting to it. Cavalier is a pretty big tail and you should know if your opponent has that Paladin tech available to start planning accordingly or to just play it relaxed if they don't have that tech available at all. Keep this in mind when playing some 1v1 games. That's going to be for me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.